Imagine the US government has a giant checkbook. This checkbook is not like the one you might have at home. It's a metaphorical one, representing the vast financial resources of the country. This checkbook pays for everything from roads and bridges, ensuring that our infrastructure is maintained and improved. It also funds our military, providing for national defense, and our schools, supporting education for future generations. It's how we keep our country running smoothly, supporting various public services and ensuring the well-being of its citizens. This checkbook is funded by something called US Treasury Debt. This debt is essentially the money the government borrows to cover its expenses. When you buy a Treasury bond, you're essentially lending money to the government. In return, the government promises to pay you back with interest. But here's the catch. The government has been spending more than it takes in. This creates a deficit, which is the gap between what the government earns and what it spends. And to cover that deficit, it needs to borrow even more money, leading to an increase in the national debt. This matters to you. Because if the debt gets too big, it can hurt our economy. A large national debt can lead to a number of economic problems. It can lead to higher interest rates, making it more expensive for you to borrow money for things like homes, cars and education. It can also cause inflation, which means the prices of goods and services go up, reducing your purchasing power. Additionally, a weaker dollar can make imports more expensive and affect international trade. Understanding how government debt works and its impact on the economy can help you make better financial decisions. It's important to stay informed and consider how these larger economic issues might affect your personal finances. By being aware and engaged, you can also participate in discussions and decisions that shape our economic policies, ensuring a more stable and prosperous future for everyone. The US has been running budget deficits for decades. A budget deficit happens when the government spends more money than it takes in through taxes and other revenue. In recent years, the deficit has grown even larger. This is partly due to increased spending on things like Social Security and Medicare as the population ages. The Treasury Department has warned that the US is approaching its borrowing limit. This limit is the total amount of money the government is allowed to borrow. If Congress doesn't raise the debt ceiling, the US could default on its debt. This would be a catastrophic event for the economy. The good news is that the US economy is currently strong. Unemployment is low and the stock market is doing well. However, there are some warning signs. Inflation is still high and interest rates are rising. The Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to try to combat inflation. But higher interest rates also make it more expensive for the government to borrow money. This puts the Treasury Department in a difficult position. It needs to borrow money to fund the deficit, but it also needs to be mindful of rising interest rates. The Federal Reserve, or Fed, plays a crucial role in managing the US economy. It is the central bank of the United States and is responsible for implementing monetary policy, which includes controlling the supply of money and setting interest rates. The decisions made by the Fed can have far-reaching impacts on the economy, affecting everything from inflation to employment rates. One of its main tools is setting interest rates. By adjusting these rates, the Fed can influence the cost of borrowing and the level of economic activity. Lowering interest rates can stimulate the economy by making loans cheaper, encouraging spending and investment. Conversely, raising interest rates can help cool down an overheating economy. When the Fed raises interest rates, it becomes more expensive for businesses and consumers to borrow money. 
This can lead to reduced spending and investment, as higher borrowing costs can deter people from taking out loans for big ticket items like homes and cars. Businesses may also cut back on expansion plans due to the higher cost of financing. This can help to slow down the economy and control inflation. Inflation occurs when prices for goods and services rise, eroding purchasing power. By making borrowing more expensive, the Fed can reduce the amount of money circulating in the economy, which can help to bring down inflation rates. However, higher interest rates also make it more expensive for the government to borrow money. The US government finances its debt by issuing treasury bonds, which are essentially loans from investors to the government. When interest rates rise, the government has to offer higher returns on these bonds to attract buyers. This is because treasury bonds, which the government uses to borrow money, are issued with interest rates. Higher interest rates mean the government has to pay more in interest to bondholders, increasing the cost of servicing the national debt. This can lead to higher budget deficits and potentially limit the government's ability to spend on other priorities. The Fed is currently in the process of raising interest rates to combat inflation. This is a delicate balancing act, as the Fed must weigh the benefits of controlling inflation against the potential drawbacks of higher borrowing costs for consumers, businesses and the government. This is putting upward pressure on interest rates for Treasury bonds. As the Fed continues to raise rates, the cost of borrowing for the government will likely increase, which could have significant implications for the federal budget and overall economic health. The interplay between interest rates, inflation and government debt is a complex and critical aspect of economic policy. Section 5. Time to refinance. What the next refunding means for the economy and your investments. Every quarter, the Treasury Department holds what's called a refunding. This is a crucial event where the Treasury sells new Treasury bonds to replace older bonds that are maturing. These bonds are essentially loans made by investors to the government and they come with different maturity dates and interest rates. The upcoming refunding announcement is particularly important because it will give investors an indication of how the Treasury Department is managing the national debt in the face of rising interest rates. Rising interest rates can have a significant impact on the economy, affecting everything from mortgage rates to the cost of borrowing for businesses. If the Treasury Department decides to issue a large amount of long-term debt, it could signal that it's concerned about the potential for interest rates to continue rising. Long-term debt locks in interest rates for a longer period of time, providing stability but also potentially higher costs if rates fall. This strategy can be seen as a way to hedge against future rate increases, ensuring that the government can manage its debt payments more predictably. On the other hand, if the Treasury Department issues more short-term debt, it could signal that it's more optimistic about the economy's future. Short-term debt needs to be refinanced more frequently, which can be advantageous if interest rates are expected to fall. This approach suggests that the Treasury believes the current high rates are temporary and that they will decrease in the near future, making it cheaper to refinance the debt. For investors, understanding the Treasury's strategy can provide insights into broader economic trends and help in making informed decisions about their own portfolios. Whether you're considering buying Treasury bonds or looking at other investment opportunities, keeping an eye on the refunding announcements can be crucial. These announcements not only reflect the government's approach to managing its debt, but also offer clues about future economic conditions. So, as the next refunding date approaches, stay informed and consider how the Treasury's decisions might impact your financial strategy. 
It's a complex dance of economics and strategy, but understanding it can give you a significant edge in navigating the financial landscape.